Welcome to the training on how to set up a video ad using Facebook's Ad Manager. So what I'm going to show you today are all the steps necessary uh, to create and target an ad on Facebook to show a video to your target audience. So to get started, we're going to go to the home page on Facebook, which is what we're looking at right now. And assuming that you have set up a Facebook business page, you need at least one business page established to have access to the Ads Manager. So assuming you've done that, and we'll cover that, how to do that in a separate video if you haven't, but if you've done that already, uh, you're in the right place and you want to go over here on the left side to this section that says Ads Manager. <clears throat> so go ahead and click on Ads Manager, and this will take you to, as it said, the Ads Manager. Now, when you're in here, if you only have one ads account, you won't actually see this drop down up here, but I need to go to that drop down to switch over to our uh, business advertising account. And this is what your ad account looks like. So we're gonna dive straight in. Uh, obviously, there is a, another video you can watch or uh, we'll make in the future that will show you all the different uh, aspects of this home screen. We're gonna be covering just specifically how to set up a video ad on Facebook. And again, this is assuming that you already have your video created. So on the screen, the first thing you wanna do is come over to this button that says Create. And go ahead and click on that. And we're to our first section, which is the objective. So in this case, the objective that we want to select is simply video views. So the reason there are a bunch of objectives here um, is we need to tell Facebook what is the thing it should be trying to accomplish for us. And so by selecting video views, we're specifically telling Facebook that we want to maximize the number of views that we get on our video. Um, and in this case, it's actually going to maximize how many 10 second views we get and 10 second views are immensely more valuable than the standard three second view. And that's actually how Facebook tells you how many views a video has gotten, um, is it defaults to three seconds. So by choosing the video views objective, we're making sure we're actually trying to get people to watch at least 10 seconds, which is much more significant, especially because video autoplays for most people on Facebook. So now that we've selected our objective, the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and give this campaign a name. Now, if this is the first or one of just the first ads uh, you've ever made, you don't have to be super picky about the type of name you use. <clears throat> we try to be as specific as possible uh, in the way that we name our campaigns, our ad sets, and our ads because we have a lot of them and they can get kind of messed up. So in my case, I would name uh, first the client, so the name of my company in this case. I usually put one of those in there. Um, and then we want to say exactly what this campaign is trying to accomplish. So usually I'll say video views as the objective, because that's a good thing to know. Um, and in this case, we're going to be promoting a video that I made about how to boost a post, or actually it's about uh, how you shouldn't boost a post. Um, so we'll say it's the don't, sorry, not, v, not view, boost posts video. Um, so that uh, shows us what business it's for, uh, what the objective of the campaign is, um, and what video it is that we're promoting. So naming your campaigns, you can decide how you want to do it. <clears throat> the reason I try to really encourage you to be careful about this now is that you can get into bad habits and if you're not making, uh, you're not creating good names for your campaigns, you'll notice that you will lose track of them very easily. Uh, I learned that the hard way. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue and that's going to take us on to our ad set step. So the ad set is where you're going to define your specific audience. And so I'm going to show you a few things you can do in here. Now, there are quite a few ways you can define your audience. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how I would define my audience for this. Uh, so what are some of the things I can target to get my video in front of my ideal audience? So in my case, my target market are real estate agents. That's who we work with. That's our specialty. Um, we also specialize in the St. Louis region for now. Someday we will expand beyond that. But for now, we want people, uh, we want real estate agents that are specifically in the St. Louis area. So the first step you're going to take here is to define that area. So we're going to come down here under audience, and you'll see that uh, the first thing we can do, you can select custom audiences. We're skipping that for now. We don't have a custom audience we want to use. Um, and the first thing you have to decide is, do you want everyone in the location you're selecting, or do you want people who live in the location, people who are recently in that location? So that would be, you know, people that were traveling in, in a lot of cases, so that can be useful. Um, and then people who are currently traveling in that location. So different things to consider there. In most cases, you're probably want to, go, go to uh, want to go with everyone in this location. That's probably the easiest thing to do. So I usually let, leave that set to the default there. 
Next thing you have here is that we've currently got the United States selected. We obviously don't want the United States, so I can go ahead and deselect that. And then I'm going to want to search for St. Louis. Now, there are a few different ways <clears throat> that you can do this here. The first would be the St. Louis DMA, which is essentially the entire regional market for St. Louis. And if you select that, you can see this map here. It's a pretty broad area. So that's usually not uh, what I'd recommend. <clears throat> it's also obviously kind of a strange shape. Um, so what you can do that, in my opinion, is a little bit better is we can actually just put in the city of St. Louis. And that's going to be the second one here. And then this allows us to choose a radius. So it's defaulted to 25 miles. That's probably not bad for my purposes. Um, I can bring it all the way down to 10. So that gives us a little bit more uh, selective of just, just kind of getting the city and then some part of Illinois over here. Uh, what I'd actually like to do just to show you how this works is I'm going to put our work address in here. And here we are, 911 Wash Ave in St. Louis. And what's cool about pu putting in a specific address is this allows you then to bring this radius all the way down to one mile if you want. So if we look at this map now, <clears throat> that's a pretty, uh, obviously a pretty narrow area that we're targeting. The other way we can do this is we could also click this button, drop pin, uh, and simply put a pin where we want. And then we can also use the radius tool down to one mile. So that is pretty handy, especially when you're targeting a specific neighborhood or specific part of town. Uh, for what I'm doing, I'm going to be already targeting a very specific category of people, and that's real estate agents. So I probably don't want to narrow that too far. I want to have this probably up here around uh, even 35 miles is probably a good, I'll just leave it at 34 there. So that gives you 34 miles, and you can see that that covers uh, most of the greater St. Louis area on both sides of the river. So we're going to go with that. Next thing that we can change if we like uh, is the age range. Not much of a reason to change that in our case because we're already going to be targeting just specifically real estate agents. So we don't have to really worry about that. Uh, but that is an option. You have your gender category. Obviously, that's something you can target. And this isn't something I have to do, but I'm going to go ahead and put English here to make sure that we're only targeting English speakers. All right, the next section we want to look at is detailed targeting. This is where it gets a lot more interesting. So this is the area in the ads manager where you have a ton of control. Uh, this is where you can target the behaviors, the demographics, the interests, all the different things that Facebook tracks, um, as well as data that they buy from other parties. All right, so if we want real estate agents, there's a few ways for us to think about this. One is that we could look for things that indicate that someone is interested in real estate related topics. That can be pretty powerful. Uh, we could look at finding people who uh, specifically list real estate as their job title. We could find people who are employees of real estate businesses. Generally, a combination of all of those is the most effective. Uh, so I actually have a saved audience that I could, uh, I could just upload for this because we obviously target real estate agents quite a bit. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to just kind of show you a couple examples really quickly of the kinds of things you can target. So one of the first you can look at. Um, and, it's, and it just kind of pops up because I've, you know, it knows what I normally search for here, which is nice. Uh, so you can f focus on this real estate slash broker one. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Now, if you look over here, you'll see that my audience obviously dropped significantly because right before this, I was looking at who lives or who's actually in this area, this greater St. Louis area. Now I'm looking at just the people in that area who also list their work uh, job title as a real estate agent or broker, right? Now, it's under 1,000. Uh, my estimated daily reach is, is really only 210 maximum over here. That's not very good. Generally, I want an audience that's between 1,000 and 5,000 when I'm first starting, especially when I'm using a smaller budget like most of our viewers are probably going to be using. So we want to we wanna add some to this. So the next thing we want to do, and uh, this doesn't, for some reason, been kind of glitchy for me lately. A lot of times right below here, if you click in this box, and you can see it, it kind of flashed there for a second, it will recommend all the other related titles. So I can I can go ahead and start typing it in again. Uh, and that's obviously one way that I can find it. But a lot of times that drop down will actually suggest to you a lot of the right kinds of things. So as you can see here, we're getting some suggestions. Um, the thing you need to watch out for though is on the right side, it shows you what category it falls into. So this first one we picked was under demographics. The demographic is work, and then it, it's obviously the specific job title. 
these new ones that we're seeing here are actually interests. So the difference is that these are people who have said they're interested in these topics. It doesn't mean this is necessarily their job. And generally these audiences are much wider. So you can see that for the interest of real estate broker, there's almost 60 million people that have that interest. That is not, in this case, a good thing to target. We don't want to have something that's that's that broad. We're not really sure what that means. So we're going to want to do is we're going to scroll down a little further. And as an example, we're going to find this one that's actually employers. Now what this means is that people have said they are employed by a real estate agent or broker. You know, that could be a decent one, right? We're going to scroll a little bit further. We have behaviors. So now this is uh, people who have uh, who like to make real estate investments. Um, again, that's not what we're looking for here, but just so you know what behaviors means. And obviously to the right side, you're always going to see this description, which is pretty helpful as you're going through here. So we're just going to pick a few more, not to spend too much time in this section here. Um, so if we say, let's see. These are mostly interest. Okay, so now we get into job titles again. We got real estate broker. We're gonna go ahead and select that one. And again, you know, you can see that it's starting to give me uh, suggestions. Okay, so if I click on suggestions, actually, those should those should pop up again. And that's great because this shows us all the different aspects that we want. So really, a lot of times you can be somewhat trusting of the suggestions. You know, a lot of these are gonna probably be real estate agents. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and select a few of those. So. Again, over to the side here, our audience now is up to 1900. That's not bad. Uh, a few other types of things we could target just to give you an example. Um, another would be people who are interested in real estate related uh, magazines or shows, things like that. Inman is a very popular real estate magazine and uh, website as well. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And you can see that added another 700 people to our potential reach. So. Those are a few things you can do. The idea here is just to go through and select the kind of interests, the kinds of targeting that you think are a good fit for your ad. <clears throat> so since we are doing video views, obviously you're trying to target people who are gonna have an interest in watching that video. So think about what's your vid what is your video about? Target the people that have an interest in that category. Pretty straightforward. One other feature I wanna show you here that I am not gonna actually use today, but I do want you to know how it works, are these two buttons here, exclude people, or narrow audience. Now, I've already created a group of people, right? I have people that are in St. Louis, they fall under all these different categories. It's a very specific group. If I had, if I wanted to get even more specific, if I wanted to say, you know, I, I wanna get this group, but I wanna exclude the people who, let's say, are interested in marketing, because maybe I decide that I only want the people who don't currently have an interest in marketing. Now, that's really not what I'm trying to do here, uh, or would normally do. I probably want people that do have an interest in marketing. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna say, what if I wanted to exclude them? Well, I'd search for marketing, and I'd find the interest, and I'd select it. So now what this has done, and you can see that took quite a few people, quite a, a good number of people off that list, is it said, okay, these are all the people based on this section that are more than likely real estate agents, and then I'm excluding the ones who have an interest in marketing. Now, for my business, I probably don't want to exclude them. That's probably not the best thing to do. So what if I want to narrow that initial audience and target just the real estate agents who do have an interest in marketing, right? So this would be if I want to exclude them. So I'm going to close that out, and then you can see my list goes back to 2,600 right here. And I actually want to narrow the audience. So it's essentially the opposite thing, right? So now what I'm saying is instead of saying, I want the real estate agents who do not have an interest in marketing, I've kind of flipped that around and I've said, I want the agents who do have an interest in marketing and I want to exclude everyone who doesn't say they have an interest in marketing. So I will probably make a video to go into that in more depth because that can be a fairly complex aspect of this and obviously it gives you essentially an unlimited number of ways to target people, um, but that's how that works. So if you say exclude, you're you're taking out whoever falls into the next category, and if you say narrow, you're looking at both categories and only taking the people who overlap in those two categories. So those are two ways that you can get a little bit more specific with your targeting. So obviously that is, in terms of you know what Facebook does, one of the probably most, probably the most powerful aspect of Facebook, marketing or advertising in particular. 
uh, is that you can really choose exactly who you want. And I would encourage you to experiment and to try different ad sets, different groups of people. Now, the next thing you're going to see here is connections. That's right here. We're not going to select this today, but what this does allow you to do is target people who have a connection to you in some way. So obviously that can be pretty powerful. So for instance, you can target the people who like your Facebook page. Now you might be asking, why would I target them? They already see my posts. Well, the reality is the organic reach, the percentage of people who like your page, who see a post, that number is getting lower, lower, lower every single day almost. When, when Facebook first started, that number is pretty close to 100%. Almost everything you posted, most people would end up seeing it. Now there's so much stuff on Facebook and Facebook created an algorithm that is only going to show your best stuff or the stuff it thinks people are most interested in to them. So that ma that means a lot of times you'll post and you'll find, in some cases, no one sees it. I mean, it's just it just doesn't, it never gets shown. It's kind of crazy. Some of it gets shown to one or maybe 2% of your followers. And then some of that content will make it beyond that. And I mean, really anything that I think it's shown to 50% or more of the people who like your page, uh, that's a very successful post. So keep that in mind. If you have a couple hundred likes on your page and you put something up and it only gets seen by two or four people, that's pretty normal. Uh, if it gets seen by 50 or more and you only have a couple hundred likes, like that's actually pretty good, you know? So that's something that's probably good to keep in mind. Now that hopefully explains why you might want to advertise to people who like your page. Because if you have something that they are not going to see because not everyone's going to see your post and it's important to you that everybody see it go ahead and come in here spend a few bucks make sure it gets out there to everyone so that that can be a really powerful target is to target the people who like your page second reason you might want to target them is that if you target them first with an ad and make sure that everybody who likes your page sees your ad first and then you adjust your targeting to target it to other people you have a better chance of getting some extra likes on that post first, right? And you can target both too if you want. But obviously, if you target the people who like your page first and they're the first ones that see these things, they're going to like it. They're going to maybe comment on it, maybe even share it. Um, that's going to help your post do better when you start showing it to strangers because if it already has 10 or 15 or 20 likes on it, uh, that makes that post seem a lot more trustworthy. So that's another reason to target the people who like your page. Uh, I won't go into all these, but obviously friends of people who like your page is useful. And then you can also exclude people who like your page. So if you're running a, you know, a special offer for new customers only, you might not want the people who like your page to see that. So those are some options there. Last thing you can do in this little section is save the audience. Um, and that obviously can be very valuable. If you create a useful audience, you can go ahead and pull it up and use it later. Section uh, placements here. This section is something you probably don't want to mess with, especially when you're relatively new to advertising. But just to show you what it is, you can select where your ad is going to show. So there's a lot of a lot of places Facebook has access to. They have their Facebook Messenger. You have Audience Network, which is a whole bunch of other websites that will show ads that come from Facebook. You have Instagram, and then you have Facebook itself. And then there's a whole bunch of subcategories of where things might show up within those. Um, so you can deselect some of those. We're leaving this alone for today, but just so you know what it is, that's where you can select uh, where you want your ad to show. It can be something you might want to consider. Now we get to budget and schedule. You can do a daily budget or you can do a lifetime budget. I usually use uh, daily. You can bring this all the way down to, I believe, a dollar a day. Um, I don't know if you can go any lower than that, but that's obviously pretty, pretty low. And you can see over here, if we go down to a dollar a day, uh, the max number of people who are probably going to see this ad is 150. That is not a ton of people. So let's go ahead and bump this to five just for the sake of our conversation. Bumps it up to seven. That means of those potential 2,600 people, there's a decent chance, you know, a third or a fourth of those people will see this video at least once uh, per day. So we could even bump this a little bit more just to see what happens. Let's take it back to 20. And at 20, this is an interesting thing to keep in mind. It only says 890 here. So you might be wondering, well, if we're spending all this money, you know, let's say we continue bumping it. If we say 100, uh, why aren't all 2,600 of these people seeing it? And the reason for that is kind of twofold. The first is that some of these people might be more expensive to advertise to than others. These are all averages. And so Facebook might be saying, hey, some of these people, they're just you know, really heavily targeted, and unless you spend a ton of money, you're just not gonna be able to get in front of them. That could be part of it. What's more likely, and what's a, probably a more real explanation for this, is not everybody gets on Facebook every day. So although there's 2,600 potential people who could see your ad, 
they won't necessarily all get on Facebook and see it. So that's why these numbers tend to be lower than the, the actual uh, total target. So we'll, again, we'll bring this back down to five. And you can see, you know, we're, we're, we're maximizing out at probably about 700 people that would see it every day. So that's fine. That's what we'll do for now. Um, moving beyond this, you can set a start and end date if you want for your campaign. And then this section in here, we're going to basically leave alone. But you can see here that what we're optimized for is video views. And in this case, we're targeting uh, or we're, we're optimized to try to get 10 second video views. Um, so that's what we're looking for. Okay, so that's the ad set section. Last thing we need to do is go ahead and give it a name. So we're going to call it St. Louis Real Estate Agents because that is who we're targeting. And again, you probably want to be as specific as possible with your ad set name. And if you had a good audience, I would definitely recommend going up here and clicking save because those audiences, uh, once you set, you know, it takes a little time to set them, you might as well go ahead and save it for future use. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and click continue. And this takes us to the last section, which is going to be uh, the actual design of the ad. So let's go ahead and name the ad. We're gonna say this is our boost post video. And we're gonna select the right page in here. And we're gonna run this from, there it is, connect to marketing. That's our business. If you have an Instagram account attached to it, it'll show it here. This is uh, my personal Instagram account because we, we didn't uh, have a connect marketing Instagram. We, we actually do now, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that as my account because our connect Instagram doesn't have that many followers yet. So uh, if we did, if we did want to show this, it would show it through my account and that's fine because I do brand myself um, as an expert in these things. And so it's fine for that to show up under my name. That's no problem. Okay. Next thing we're going to look at is the format. Now, Obviously, we encourage you to make a custom video to make something, uh, you know, something useful, something valuable to people to get yourself on camera. That's what we're all about. However, if you just want to try this and you don't have the, you know, don't have the courage worked up, maybe, or you just haven't made a video yet, uh, you can actually select this second one, which is slideshow. And it's going to ask you for up to 10 pictures, which it'll turn into a little bit of a video for you. So that's an option, uh, especially if you're just getting started. Maybe that's a place to start we're going to go with a single video, uh, which I've already made. So in this case, uh, I'm not going to have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like to upload a video. So you go ahead and click upload video. You're going to come into your video folder. I'm going to come in and look at this one and you would go ahead and just, and just pick a video. So you pick it, you click open, and then it's going to upload for a while. And then you're going to be able to go through, um, and add subtitles. You can have Facebook auto generate those for you. Um, I have this video ready to go because we don't want to have to sit here and watch that. And so I'm going to come into my video library and let's see, where is this one? Hmm. Oh, you know what? This one is actually in a different account. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust this real quick. I'm actually going to run this through my, my uh, Nick Niehaus page, which is also attached to the same Instagram account. So these are what I'm doing here when I say browse library is I'm actually looking at any of the videos that would be in the library for uh, that account, which is odd because I'm not finding the one I need in here. All right, so I'm actually going to show you how to upload it. So let's go ahead back and do that. So the video I wanted is this one. All right, so while that's loading, uh, I'll go ahead and just give you a couple quick video tips for making your own video. A um, couple things you want to keep in mind. You want to have as good of a sound source as possible. So the key to good sound, at least on a budget, is just to get a microphone nice and close to your mouth and to not have a lot of background noise. Um, so you can probably see in this case, I'm wearing a pretty simple $15, $20 Microsoft headset. Uh, that's going to do a much better job of picking up sound than the microphone in your laptop. Um, you want to get a lapel microphone, which is something you can clip on your shirt uh, for videos where you're actually setting up a camera. Uh, those are a couple easy things you can do for better sound. And then on the lighting side of things, the the key to lighting is really just to make sure the light is shining 
directly on your face as much as possible. So uh, if you can avoid the kind of light, you know, honestly, like I have right now, which is shining directly down over me, kind of gives you this effect of your eyes looking shaded out, which is not very good. You don't want any of that. So do what you can to avoid that. Um, and then you want to make sure that you get, you know, as close to natural light as possible. So I have some, I believe there's 6,500 lumen lights that I use in my studio. Um, and then in terms of what's in the video, I mean, the big thing on, on video is you just want to make sure you're providing lots of value. So our advertising approach is to basically uh, put videos in front of people that are going to be helpful to them and to try to educate and assist people rather than just simply promoting ourselves to them. So that is something to keep in mind. All right, so now our video has loaded and you can see here that we have this option well, first of all, you can add a, a custom thumbnail. So I'm not going to do that because I actually have uh, the very first kind of frame from this video is, is uh, me kind of lower in the frame. It, it's kind of interesting looking. It catches their eye. That's probably not a bad thumbnail, but you can select your own thumbnail and putting in something that is going to catch people's eye and get them to stop and wait a couple seconds to see what's in your video. That's a really good idea. So anytime you feel like you could add, and it doesn't even have to be a clip from the video, it can be completely unrelated, that's fine. So just make sure you have a good thumbnail. The next thing you wanna do is generate your uh, subtitles. You can let Facebook do this automatically and then, then they'll review it and they'll actually correct it for accuracy. That usually takes you know a few hours to a day for them to come back with it. You can upload your own. Uh, which I've never actually done because uh, ever since I've been doing this stuff, Facebook's been able to generate them for you, but you can upload them separately um, or you can generate them automatically and then make the edits yourself. So you'll, you'll see, so you can see here, you know, hey, can I get a boost? That's correct. Um, that's better, just don't do it on Facebook. We probably want to add a period. We want to capitalize Facebook. Uh, it blows my mind, but for some reason, Facebook does not capitalize its own name in its editor, which you would think it would do. And then it tells you it's spelled incorrectly, which is interesting. So uh, I'm not going to go through all of these individually, but obviously you can go through and edit all of the subtitles because they're almost always at least somewhat messy. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that, but go ahead and do that when you're when you're setting up your video. Now we're going to come down here, and this is where we can select what we want the ad to say. So in this text box, this is the text that shows up right here above the ad or above the video itself. Um, so this is where you need to think about, you know, what exactly do you want to say to catch someone's attention? So we probably don't want a ton of copy, but it's usually a good idea to have some copy. And so our, our video is about boosting posts. So why don't we ask about that? Have you ever been tempted to boost a post on Facebook? And we'll probably go ahead and put some quotes around that. Let me tell you why you might not want to do that. Okay, so we can get further into how to write great copy and all that kind of stuff. But when you're writing copy for a video, I think that you're primarily trying to first grab the attention of the people who are going to enjoy the video the most or get the most out of it. Um, and then get them to watch it, right? So you could write a lot more copy. There's all kinds of copywriting courses out there. I don't wanna spend a ton of time on copy in this video, but you do wanna make sure that you're speaking to the people who are most likely to watch it. So, you know, this is exactly what I'm doing. If you've ever been tempted to, to boost a post on Facebook, let me tell you, my, you might not want to do that, right? So that's really gonna grab the attention of people who, you know, have thought about boosting or have boosted, and then, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a, this one minute video in front of them. So next thing we want to do is we want to consider, do we want people to take some sort of action after this? So we can add a website URL as well as a bunch of headlines and things. So it's going to suggest, you know, URLs you've used in the past, et cetera. Um, then you can add a headline and a news link, news feed link description if you like. We're going to go ahead and leave that alone uh, because in this case, all I'm really trying to do is get people to watch this video I made. And I think that there are not a lot of advertisers out there that are doing things this way right now. And I think that this is a really big opportunity. I think that the less promotional you are and the more you can just focus on delivering value and helping people out, uh, the better you're gonna do right now in social media. I mean, we have a situation where lots, especially of real estate agents are 
running these ads trying to get people to opt in to get a list of homes for sale or opt in for a home guide or opt in for this or that and i totally understand why they're doing that but a lot of them are doing it now and there's not many real estate agents or people in any industry for that matter who are out there just simply trying to show people um some some useful information or make them laugh or have some fun and uh, i think those are the videos that tend to do the best so one thing i i kind of think of when i say that is there was a realtor i believe in uh, Texas somewhere who made some just absolutely horrendous uh, music videos because he just cannot sing and he even admits that I heard an interview with him um, but that's almost part of what makes it funny he's just a terrible singer but he has an absolute blast and he made these kind of uh, you know music videos using uh, popular songs he kind of dubbed over them um, and he's made at least three or four of them and like they've all gone viral and like I said it's, he's not a good singer um, but he has a lot of fun with it and it's entertaining and I can guarantee he's gotten a absolute ton of business as a result of it. Uh, and as he, as he said in this interview, I mean, he was basically getting people coming out to him saying, hey, are you gonna make one of those when you sell my house, right? So he did something different, he entertained people. Um, and yes, it was still kind of promoting a house, but obviously the idea was just to have some fun and, and to be funny and engaging. So, you know, really think about that when you're doing this stuff. I mean. I understand you know, the need to generate leads quickly. I understand the need to get a good ROI. I'm not encouraging you to ignore those things. I think those are very important. But I do want you to think a little bit when you're making this kind of content, when you're making videos, think about the person who's seeing it. Think about helping them. Um, and the more that you do that, the more that they're gonna start to turn to you when they need something, the more they're gonna think of you when they're in a real estate situation, um, and the more likely it is they pick up the phone and call you in particular. So that's kind of how I approach things. I mean, I, I will uh, put out event promotions in front of people. Um, you know, I will every now and then promote one of our products or services. But when I'm doing a lot of my advertising, it's really just to help people. Uh, and it, go, it goes a long way. People have really started to uh, go out of their way to tell me how much they like the videos I make. And that's actually pretty cool. You know, I've only been doing this for about six months making Facebook videos. So it's very cool to have people come up to you at networking events and, and act like they think they've met you somewhere, but they can't figure it out. And it's because they saw your videos on Facebook. So try to go about it that way. You're going to get better engagement. You're going to get people liking your videos a lot more. You're going to get people sharing them and you're going to develop a following. And that is really the power of social media is to develop a following of people who are your fans in some way, right? So we got our video, we have our copy, we set up our ad set, we got our campaign ready. We're pretty much good to go. So what we're gonna do is scroll down. There's a few last things to mention. Um, obviously, you can set up your pixel to track people who are coming to your page. Uh, if you're sending them somewhere else, we're not in this case. We're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. And then really all we gotta do is go ahead and click confirm here. And so it's gonna take a second. And basically what Facebook is now doing is compiling all the information I put together uh, into a campaign and submitting it to be reviewed. All right, so what we're gonna do here is go to continue. And this brings us back to our homepage. So we're pretty much finished. That's about the gist of this video. One thing I will tell you um, is you do want to make sure that you keep an eye on this button up here, this review and publish. Anytime you make small uh, adjustments to ads, things like that, you want to make sure that you, cl you click that button and that's going to submit those updates. If you don't do that, sometimes the updates or the changes you make will not go through. Um, so in this case, since I set up this campaign as a demonstration, I want to go ahead and turn that off. And you can see that it's set up here, it's saved to draft. And you can notice if you were paying attention, this was a two a second earlier. Now it says a three in the review and publish. And I made this mistake uh, during a live demonstration a few days ago and I ended up running one of these ads accidentally for about a half a day. So I only spent about two bucks, not a big deal, but uh, definitely was not intending to do that. So you wanna go ahead and click on it, hit publish, and that is going to update that. So. Big difference to keep in mind there is that when you're creating a campaign from scratch at the end, when you hit confirm, it is actually submitting it. It's submitting it for approval. And a lot of times it gets approved right away. When you come in here to make an edit, you have to do review and publish. Otherwise it will not publish that edit, right? Um, and so if, if you noticed once that updated all the way, that uh, campaign that I had here, which is in all of my active campaigns currently, or sorry, my campaigns that are turned on on the left side here, 
um, it is now down here in all the campaigns that are turned off because I went ahead and turned it off. Uh, but it didn't do that until I hit review and publish. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that is how you create a Facebook video ad. Please, if you have any questions, I'm sure I missed something in the process of demonstrating that or there's something you could get some more clarity on, please comment below the video or send me a message directly and I will try to do my best to answer your question. So I hope that was useful and I hope you're able to get out there and try some video Facebook ads.